You say you've been traveling for, or how long have you been, you've been touring for at this point? Two months, just about. Okay. Um, yeah, it's like pretty much every day. It's been good, man, but it's been exhausting. But before that, you've been playing, I mean, you've been playing shows kind of nonstop, though, for the most part, for the last, I don't know, two years or something? Yeah, What's I don't it been? rent a place. I just live on the road nowadays. Like, Do you literally not have a place right now? Literally, because I've just been so busy, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. The longest I was in one place over the last two, three years was uh, like two weeks in London to finish up some stuff on my album. Oh, okay. And, like they've had me on tour the rest of the time. Where have you? Like, what do you? What do you call home? Um, I don't know. I mean, I went to my mom's for Christmas. <laughs> Is that in Seattle? Is that right? In Seattle. Okay. That's well remembered. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I went up to Seattle for Christmas. Um, the last place I lived was London. Right. I got a British passport. Okay. So yeah. Are you, did you did you grow up in London or did you were you born in England or something? I, I'm trying to remember our conversation yeah, I was last born, time. Born in England and then grew up in. Uh, in the U.S. Gotcha. Yeah. So you don't have a place right now. I mean, when you're on tour like this, are you are you uh, are you are you staying in hotels? Are you are we meeting new people and and, and, cry, and couch I'm surfing? What are we doing? In the creepiest, rapiest, murderiest hotels. Oh, possibly imagine. Do we have those here in Minneapolis? I don't right. know. I've seen tonight. So. All right, we'll find <laughs> out. We'll I find mean, out later. I'm, I'm serious. I, I was in a hotel. I had to move because there were bed bugs. First, like a, it was big. You know triumphant looking beetle thing of course and uh it was followed by two crackheads asking for for heroin jeez um, had to move again there's another crackhead sleeping under the stairs i mean it, it was where are we putting you up can we can we i mean you're on a label now you're on capital records can they no, put some right. money on the account what i think those guys about? are giving me some of that fancy label money. come on now i've seen the tower the tower is a beautiful it's place so freaking huge what are we right? talking about the beatles were on that label sell one of those fancy frank sinatra microphones no doubt yeah. yeah, it was Sinatra's 100th birthday, I think, a year or two ago. They were celebrating it. They got billboards all over L.A. We can't get you a nice hotel room? No, tell me about it, man. Come on, yeah. Capitol Records. That's why it's called the Shoestring Tour, because it's uh, it's been very basic. Is that right? Is that what you're calling it? So I got my tour manager playing bass and guitar. He's rocking it, actually. Love it. Uh, his drummer's playing for half price to save money. Uh, oh, okay. Well, that's, that's cool, because I, I think last time I saw you perform in Minneapolis... Uh, was at the same venue at Fine Line with Tom O'Dell. Yeah, acoustic. About a year ish ago, six months ago, something like that. And yeah, you were acoustic by yourself, so you have a full band tonight as we record this. Full band. Well, okay. Yeah, as full as I can make it. Yeah. <laughs> on a on a shoestring budget. I like it. Yeah. I saw you perform some songs in Louisville a, a couple of weeks ago at, right, at, yeah. at the gathering, which was a fun sort of industry gathering that we did. And uh, speaking of bed bugs, uh, the hotel we were staying in. Uh, that was fancy. It was a very nice hotel. But oddly enough, and this just goes to kind of talk about how, you know, being in a, a sketchy room is even worse because we were in a very nice hotel in Louisville. Um, but one of my buddies who works uh, in L.A. and does radio out there, she got bed bugs and had to move hotels. And, that, and it was like a super fancy place. And the one so, that we played in? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh that really messes me up. Yeah. Shout out to Lisa at K-Rock. Yeah, she had to move. She had to move some, uh, we didn't even, some rooms. We didn't even stay there. We, uh, we got there for the day. Okay. And then we have to drive through the night to the next place. Um, Let's explain this. So what happens is every year in Louisville, a bunch of um, radio, alternative radio DJs and programmers, we all kind of get together at this place called The Gathering. Um, and, you know, we kind of philosophize on radio and music and uh, artists like yourself uh, performs for us. And kind of a, a unique experience because it was sort of, we had you play in a, almost like a ballroom sort of vibe in a hotel. And it was a very cool experience. Capital did a great job kind of making it like this kind of old school, like whiskey, like Rat Pack kind of kind of vibe going back to uh, uh, like Frank Sinatra that we were talking about. But what was that experience like for you kind of playing for a, a room full of industry jaded people like myself? Was that okay? I think, um, you know, it's not the industry people's fault that they're jaded. They've seen so many gigs, more than the average person. They mm -hmm. do this thing every single year. Mm -hmm. As an artist, it's my job to be so entertaining or so unique that it's an interest exp interesting experience for those guys. Yeah. I think next time I do it, because I went in thinking like, okay, I don't want to like be one of those cheesy guys that tries to get all the industry people up on their feet. I'm just going to go in, play my songs, mm -hmm. um, and do a tight set and get out of there. But after, after performing, I thought, you know what? Fuck it. Next time I'm going to go in and like just do all the normal shit. No, you stood out. You did. I mean, we saw a lot of bands over two or three days and you were, it was like you and like Casey Hill and the Aces were like the three bands that really stuck out for me. Right. Yeah. Well, that's so. good to hear. But I mean, usually I'm in there, you know, like putting my face in P 
people's uh, all people's deals and, and melting people into my into my bosom. Mm. Um, showing your bosom and showing that. my bosom. The I picture get, we took together. You were showing your nipple. I've I've been naked at gigs. You know, like I um I get into the crowd and uh, get people singing along. Yeah. So next one of those, I'm gonna go all out. I mean, let's go all out tonight. We're recording this in Minneapolis, uh, Fine Line Music Hall, as we uh, post this video uh, this evening. Um, for those who haven't seen you live before, what is something they can expect from a, a Barnes Courtney uh, shoelace tour experience? A lot of sweat, yeah, stinkiness, and a lot of uh, a lot of gusto and adrenaline, mm. and bodily fluids. No doubt. Yeah, I've seen you, uh, as I mentioned, with Tom O'Dell before. You've had um, tours with, I think I saw you played with the who ones. I mean, you, you've been playing some, some big shows, some small shows, some headline shows. Uh, your songs have been all over the place. I've seen them in commercials. We've played fire countless times on go 96, three, but I want to know about what it was like when you got the call that you're going to have a song in a recent WWE pay-per-view. <laughs> what was that like? What was that experience like when you got that call? I've been really lucky on the sinks, man. They yeah. don't even call me anymore. <laughs> they don't even they just do it. They just do it. So it was my fans that first told me about it. Mm. The first one that I got before the raw thing was uh, a tribute to uh, that wrestler, the animal. I think it was Georgie Animal Steel. Yeah. 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 No, I'm not gonna lie. Like I like I like WWE. I don't care. It's fine. So that's how I found out about why, you. Why being... should you be? You know, no, it's good. A couple of hairy dudes rolling about in a ring. There's nothing to be ashamed of about yeah. that. It's a beautiful experience. It's, it's, for it's, it's artistic. It's a piece it, of art. It, it is. Anything that makes you feel. Yeah, no doubt. It's art. I feel something. <laughs> makes me a little uncomfortable, but that's okay. I make it work. Yeah, and it was, it was really cool, man. Yeah. Uh, like, 12-year-old Barnsley clenched a silent fist of approval as he saw that. Did you grow up on that, on, on WWE? Yeah, well, I mean, I wasn't allowed to watch wrestling in the house. Okay. It was deemed as uncouth. I wasn't allowed to have Goldeneye on Nintendo 64, and I wasn't allowed to watch wrestling. But my friend Cameron Melgard mm. used to watch that shit every day. Okay. So I'd go over to his house. We both had those wrestling dolls that totally weren't dolls. Yeah. Do you remember? Like, the yeah, like the pillows, the pillows, like Ultimate <laughs> Warrior and Hulk Hogan and all that. Yeah, I had those. Yeah, those were dope. <laughs> so we used to watch that and, uh, you know, do various other manly things, throw uh, spitballs at cars. And sure. Stuff. Exciting. Rocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Buddy of mine, man, I, I, I was born in Vegas. I spent my first three or four years there. Uh, and I remember we did similar things, but I had a friend who took like this giant rock. There was this like brand new BMW, like our neighbor had, and he was not the nicest guy, but my friend decided out of nowhere, as he was driving by to just throw this rock at this brand new BMW car. He was grounded for the entire summer. Oh my God. Uh, not really related to anything, but you made me think of it. So I said it out loud. It's a great feeling to hurl a, blunt object through the windshield of an expensive automobile. If you haven't yeah. tried it before, listeners, I highly recommend Let's it. Let's do it tomorrow. Yeah, me and you. We'll walk down the street. We'll walk on Hennepin, get arrested. It'll Last day of tour, man. We yeah. got to do something. No doubt. Let's have a good time tonight. Yeah, come on. We, this is an auspicious occasion. It deserves to be treated as such. Am I supposed to legally say we're not serious or I don't want to get sued? We're going to be okay, right? Don't, don't actually do that unless you do. Um... <laughs> Barnes Courtney, uh, I, I really uh, very much appreciate you bringing in your guitar. Oh, um, this is probably my favorite part of the job and, and, and being a radio DJ is watching artists like you perform five feet from me. Uh, what is uh, the song that we're going to hear you and watch you perform today? Um, if I'm doing one, then I'll do Golden Dandelions, which is the new single. I mean, you can do two if you want. I'll do two. We'll do two. Yeah, why not? Let's All do right. two. What should, we, uh, what should we know about this song before we, uh, we, we take it in together? Um, Golden Dandelions is about death. Nice. <laughs> it's a very happy song. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's a nice death, though. It's a beautiful death. It's about this man, and he's in his room, mm. and uh, the angel of death appears to him oh. as, as a lover, cloaked in the silvers of the moon. Okay. And she sort of, like, leads him out of his window and out into the night, and they float above the cityscape and all the traffic lights, and the colors saturate into this wonderful, like, phantasmagoria of different animals and scenery, and he finds himself in a field of golden dandelions sure. being laid to rest in the afterlife. You know, if you incorporated technology into this, it'd be like a Black Mirror episode. Oh, that'd be something. amazing. Let's do that. They're like, forget about this car smashing stuff. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's watch Black Mirror on Netflix today. Yeah. <laughs> Barnes Courtney. Just you and me. Netflix and show. Barnes Courtney. That's golden dandelions. <laughs> All right. She came to me in robes so white 
In the corner of my room, a specter of the night, silhouetted by the moon, with floating face over traffic lights, bearing down on black and sky, and colors burst as I close my eyes. Pictures in my mind In a painting of the past I'm brushing over lines And I'll paint them all again We're floating fast over traffic lights Bearing down on black and sky And colors burst as I close my eyes In the candlelight Now we'll cradle all these memories to the end She said, lay me down in golden dandelions Cause I've been waiting for this moment All my life, follow me into the It's just me in here and two others, but man, I can't, I can't do that justice. I wish there was like a thousand people in here to cheer for you. That was amazing. Thanks for listening to my humble tunes. You're like, you're good at what you do, man. I keep trying. I've been <laughs> I kind of see why Capital signed you now, you know? <laughs> Not that I didn't before, but wow, man, that's incredible. <laughs> what are you guys doing with this Barnes guy? What a voice. <laughs> and I've seen you twice, but man, really that intimate experience is, uh, that's incredible, man. It's going to get a lot more intimate tonight. It sure is. The indeed. Black, Black Mirror episode marathon. <laughs> You watch that show? I love that show. I can't say enough good things about that show. Sam Juanito, you seen that episode? Which one is that one? That's the one where it, like it's set in the 80s, and you're like, why are we in the 1980s? Every other episode. Oh, been- hold, first of all, I know where you're going. Let's not spoil it. But you're talking about uh, you're talking about uh, San Junipero. Oh yeah, that's the one. And that's one. Not only not only is that. You're like Google. You're like, did you mean <laughs> See, San Junipero? You, here's what happened, okay? So I decided to be a, a radio nerd and a music and TV guy and, right. have, and retain all this information that gets me nowhere except a job in radio, whereas you, you're singing, uh, you're a guitar player, you're touring the world. Um, I, I'm sure uh, ladies love you quite a bit, whereas I'm well, over I keep here. telling them. Yeah, no doubt, man. But I'm just, uh, I love Black Mirror. It's a great show. But awesome. man, that show, man, it's incredible. It's so, so good. So, so good. I recommend everyone, here's what you should do. Watch San Junipero, get in the mood, and then listen to some Barnes Courtney afterwards. Yeah. Oh, or that, what's that episode with the, uh, the people who bike for electricity? You know, they're, they're biking. Yeah, that's uh, the merits, or oh. the, uh, not, not enough merits. Or I'm in love like with the lady who is in that episode. Oh, she's so good. You know what I mean? Yeah, from the singing competition. Yeah. And they oh decide she should God. do something else instead. She is my wife. No doubt. I mean, you can probably meet her, I'm sure. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. You're like getting kind of famous. That's right? Thing. Yeah. yeah my, my mom knows who I am. Hit her up. You guys know who I am. I'm happy to have you here I mean, as well. <laughs> you want to do one more song for us? Yeah, why not? What are we going to hear? Uh, Shall I play Fire? Yeah, let's play Fire. Barnes Courtney. Lonely shadows following me. Lonely ghosts come a-calling Talking to me, now I'm gone, I'm 
Interwebs. Video world. My man, thank you so much for being here. That man, was incredible. Thanks for having me in your fancy pants. Continue. I mean, I'm trying to be fancy. I mean, in your presence, how fancy could I possibly be? This is great. You got marble countertops. This is called um, Cambridge, Zeke. Is that what this is? Cambria. Cambria. Allegedly, not allegedly, it is uh, the biggest piece of Cambria in the world. No, it's not. That's what I've been told from people that I work with. They surely they were just lying to like get into your pants or something. There's no way this is the this is the largest piece of Cambria in the world. My boss did tell me that before I took the job, so you could be right. <laughs> but, <laughs> like who doesn't want to work in front of this every day, right? I didn't even know that this was a thing. It sounds like something that's been made up from a fantasy novel. It could be, or a Black Mirror episode. Oh yeah. Who knows? Cambria. Maybe season three. My no way. Cambria. Season four. Season four of Black Mirror is coming up soon. By oh, way. when is it coming out? I think it's sometime in the fall. I wish I could just plug Black Mirror every radio interview. This is great. No doubt. Let's keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, keep who, doing. yeah, what are we plugging right now? Barnes Courtney, what do you want to tell people about what's coming out? I mean, you got a record coming out. Uh, Golden Dandelions is the is the single at the moment. But what should uh, people uh, look into uh, in regards to all things Barnes Courtney? Um, God, I, I can only think about Black Mirror right now. It really is a fantastic show. Mm-hmm. Sorry, you're, you're trying to be professional, and I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm the worst. I am the furthest thing from professional, as so most of this interview this has shown. a dangerous pair. Yeah. Um, yeah, new single, Golden Dandelions. Um, album coming out in September. Doing another U.S. tour. It's going to keep you on the road forever, man. Just forever and ever and ever. We'll get you back out here soon. Until my humble little fingers grind down to a paste. No doubt. <laughs> I keep saying no doubt. I don't know why. I just keep agreeing with you. <laughs> that's, that's great. I like I it, yeah. yeah. It's a good relationship. Uh, Barnes Courtney, Go 96.3. We'll have you back in the Twin Cities very soon. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks again, man. Appreciate it.